part two of Are You Ignoring Your Brides? We are gonna be looking at, you've now got your brides onto your email list. What do we do with them? Let's find out in today's episode. Dawn here, welcome back to this week's episode of Bridal Business TV. I am so excited to have you guys on with me. Hey, good morning, thank you so much for joining me live for the live stream this morning. So today we're gonna be talking part two about why you are ignoring brides. And I said yesterday that the reason why a lot of us are ignoring brides is that we kind of don't realize that we're doing it. So we're gonna get into that a little bit deeper again today as to if we do, uh, if we are not ignoring our brides, how we are then uh, perhaps kind of not doing what we can to encourage them to book with us. So thank you so much for joining me. Hey, good morning, Simone. Um, please go ahead and share the broadcast out. For those of you who are even on the replay, please do the same. Hit the share button and share the broadcast out this morning with as many people as possible. That would be awesome. Um, and letting Facebook know that my content is worth listening to. So um, for those of you who never met me before, my name is Dawn Rose. I am a hairstylist and makeup artist here in Melbourne, Australia. Um, and I also help hair and makeup artists with their social media, digital marketing, and kind of branding and finding their unique place within the bridal industry, helping you guys to book more brides specifically. So I wanted to talk today a little bit more in depth about why I feel like um, hair and makeup artists are kind of ignoring their brides. So yesterday, part one, if you haven't seen it yet, on my video yesterday for part one, I said that the reason why some of us are ignoring brides is not because uh, we, we mean to do it. It's because people um, or, or clients, let's just talk about even clients in general. Clients in general are looking at your Facebook page, they're looking at your Instagram accounts, they're even going onto your website, but we're not stopping the scroll. And and it's funny because our clients, they want us to stop the scroll. They want you to give them a reason to stop and we want to give them a reason to stop. So we have to find a way of stopping them from scrolling through um, Instagram and Facebook and then going off, hey, morning, Tina. Hey, thanks for joining me this morning. So what we wanna do is, I said yesterday, is it's great having um, these likes and comments and shares and engagement because we want engagement from our, um, from our brides, from our potential clients, but, but we need to get them off of social media and onto our email address onto our email list and create a like you know like what used to be the whole rolodex we want to create a digital rolodex of email addresses of potential clients potential brides to be and the reason why we want to do that is because they have so much choice right they could go anywhere and everywhere to book a hair and makeup artist you know there could be six people just in your vicinity that does hair and makeup we need to use our powers as hair and makeup artists to really gain their attention. We want to nurture them as much as we can so that when they're ready to make a booking, they book us. And yesterday I said I, that we talk about two different types of brides. We have our bride A, the bride A is generally the ones that they're ready to go. They may have been following you for a while. They may uh, have been looking, they've consciously been looking for pricing. They've gone onto your website, they've seen everything, they love everything, and they may have submitted a quote. Those brides are our bride A. And the thing is, is that we treat those brides as our priority because they've made that step with us. And that's true, we should be doing that. And we should be doing everything we can then to turn that bride into a booked bride. But what we forget about is what I call our bride B, which is like the browsing bride, the brown who are the brides who are just kind of going around and still they're still collecting information. What we want to do is we want to get them to collect our information, but we kind of want to do it with, as an exchange. So they get something from us and we get something from them, which is their email address. And I'm going to talk more about this in a private masterclass, which you guys are welcome to join me on. It's uh, bridalbusinessschool.com forward slash book more brides. I'm going to talk more in detail about this. So 
What do we do though when we've got these brides and we are actually creating an email uh, list? What are we supposed to be doing with these brides once we've got them on the email list? Well, the idea is, is that we use an automated system. So instead of collecting your email list or your emails from uh, your brides on Yahoo, Gmail, Hotmail, you need to use what's called an email service provider. And this is a specific company that is set up to create like mail shots. You guys have heard of mail shots, right? You know that they kind of can do blast emails, right? They've been they've been around for a really long time. But most of us kind of think to ourselves, oh, you know, that's the how those people do all the spam emails. But and and I think in in a long time ago before, you know, Gmail and Hotmail had um, a lot more of these filters. We used to get a, a heck of a lot more spam than what we do now. But what we want to do is we want to use these to our advantage and we want to create an email list inside of a, a specific email service provider. And there are free ones out there. I'm going to talk about that on the training as well. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how you can sign up to them and, and what they can do for you. But these email service providers can then, cre you can create emails that go to brides in an intermittent process. So you might want to get this email list of these potential brides that could possibly turn into a booked bride. And what we want to do is we want to nurture them in a series of automated emails that we set up in advance, we rewrite them, we do them, and then literally all they do is every time somebody requests our information, they give us their email address and in return we give them the information, but then we also put them on this path of um, introducing ourselves to them. And that's the key. This is not about us creating a sales pitch of email, 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 sales, sales, book me, book me, book me. It's about taking these brides on a journey through their email. What I wanna say here is, is that yes, we should be posting on social media and we can use, um, you know, you can use our posts, but you have to think that what between one and 6% of your followers see your posts. Whereas what do we do pretty much every day? I can guarantee you that most people every day, they've got their email in their pocket. They might sit on the train, work, you know, they might be at lunch break. And what are they doing? They're looking through their emails. Okay, so the chances of them seeing your email to them is a lot higher than them seeing your post. And that's not to say that we should do either or, it's that we should do both. We wanna maximize how many times our brides see us. You probably have heard people say before that it takes a few touch points before somebody actually shares money with you. Yes, it takes a few times for them to come into contact with you before they're actually going to spend money with you. And this is exactly the same. If we're doing everything we can on social, everything we can on our website, and everything we can on our emails to nurture and create a sort of a relationship with these brides, you have got so much more chance of turning them into a booking. Now, that is the browsing bride, okay? So the other thing I wanted to mention today was not just the fact that we have the browsing bride, that we have the brides that, you know, they're not quite ready to book yet. And so we wanna nurture them. We want to encourage them that when they are ready, if we're keeping their inbox, you know, weekly, monthly, and hey, morning, Gretchen, thanks for joining. So we wanna keep in their inbox weekly, monthly, that's great, and we're kind of keeping them warmed to who we are. Remember as well, it takes a few seconds and they could be off your social media and they may not come back. Whereas at least if you've captured them with their email address, you're still doing other things behind the scenes. And that reminds them as well, even in the email, just, hey, don't forget, you know, I've got um, a post out today on social, you know, with regards to wedding trials or, um, I'm going live at the end of the month to have a Q&A with everyone about you know weddings and, and skin and, and hair in general. So you can use your emails to encourage them to go back onto your social, okay? So it's kind of a win-win for everything. So the second thing I wanna talk about though is the fact that you're ignoring brides who are already booked with you. Tell me in the comments, if anyone in the comments, who has read a post on social media in, inside of our forums that says, oh, I had this bride um, and now we're six months away from her wedding and she paid her deposit but now she wants to cancel because she's found someone cheaper. How many of you have read that? I have, I think I've read that. I pretty much read a post like that every week or so where somebody says, um, you know, I had this bride and we've been booked in and she paid her deposit, you know, six months ago, 12 months ago, and now I contacted her again. And either, there's two things, isn't there? There's either she's ignoring me, 
that's one we get all the time oh why are these brides and aren't ignoring she paid a deposit but now she's ignoring me and i haven't heard from her since or it's um you know she's decided she's she's contacted me six months from the wedding and now she's cancelled because she's found someone cheaper the reason why brides do that is because you have ignored them you have booked them 12 months ago for their wedding which is six to 18 months in advance thank you for sharing gretchen i appreciate that so you have booked this bride in and it is you know let's say you booked her in where are we today we are july 2019 okay so you booked her in last july her wedding is this september october right you booked her in she's she's been booked in for a while now and then the, what's happened she's come you've gone contacted her now you're contacting her now because you said oh it's time are you ready to have your trial you're only contacting her because it's time for her to spend more money with you what's happened to the last 12 months she paid a deposit, yes, but again, generally this, this is where we take maybe a, a low deposit, you know, that kind of 25 to $100, because if they're overall then found, found someone cheaper in that time, and they've, you know, saved $300, to them losing 100 bucks, it's kind of worth it. Do they want to spend less money? Probably not. And do they want to not have you, again, Probably not, because there was a reason why they booked you in the first place. There was a re they saw something in you. They connected with you. They connected with everything that you did. So there was a reason why they booked you in the first place, right? So I don't think it's because they think that this person who's cheaper is any better than you. It's that you haven't done anything to ensure that you were the right choice. So when you are booking brides, please, please don't forget them. Don't forget these brides that, yes, okay, it was 12 months ago that I booked her and now it's 12 months down the line and her, her wedding's in another six months time. Oh, it's time to get her in for a trial you've just ignored her for 12 months and then you're like hey it's time for you to spend more money with me that's not building a relationship so what can we do again get them using this email or using an email service provider you can set up a series of automated emails so this is not about me saying to you guys oh every single week you need to get on the email and email every single bride no all you need to do is you need to set yourself up a series of i don't know 10 15 20 emails that you write in advance i don't know that's sounding shocking again join me for the master class and i'll talk to you exactly how to lay these emails out i'm going to talk to you about how we write those emails so bridalbusinessschool.com forward slash book more brides um I'll, I'll have a link in the either in the comments below or um uh, in the comment above for you guys um, so or you can click the blue button on Facebook um, and join me for the masterclass. We'll go into details, but you write these emails in advance so that when she submits that quote to you, yes, okay, you're working on the quote and that has to be one on one. You need to go back to them, you know, talk to them, maybe book them in for the consult. That has to be a manual part of your booking process. Again, talk more about that on the on the on the training. That part has to be a, a manual process. But there is no reason why you cannot set up a series of emails that the minute a bride connects with you and asks for a quote that you keep them in the fold. When you got them booked in, you need to be keeping them in encouraged to contact you, keep them on your Facebook. Hopefully as well that if you if you kind of plan this in in advance, which you know, if you're gonna write 10 to 20 emails it's certainly something that i talk about batching a lot so batch them all in the one go write them spend a you know a couple of days a weekend just bashing out these emails maybe not a weekend because with brides but you know what i mean <laughs> spend a couple of days bashing out these emails get it set up inside your auto service provider and then once a bride is booked you pop them onto that list and it's all it is is a list of information it's information to keep them knowing who you are and then i would also set yourself up some reminders to maybe do a few personal connections with the bride so maybe dm them on facebook maybe actually pick up the phone and call them maybe just even send them a text message every so often just to keep that relationship going um, if you want to call them it's a good idea to call them as well because obviously i do find that if we can get brides on the phone it's a rarity but most most brides who are really serious about making a booking will actually pick up the phone to you. So whilst it's a little bit of a no one's really got time to talk anymore, which I, I, I do understand and I agree with, um, once they're booked, once they're booked, if 
if it's their hair and makeup artist for their wedding calling them, they're gonna pick up the phone, yeah? And even if it's just a quick, oh, hey, you're there, I just wanted to touch base. So think about how you're nurturing. Stop ignoring brides. Make sure that you are setting yourself up for success. Okay, we want success. We don't want brides turning around and saying, I found someone cheaper, I found someone else, because we, they should not have any reason to do that. There should be no reason for them to go elsewhere. They booked you for a reason, they love you and what you do, and so you need to just create that relationship with them. Is everyone with me? Am I on my high horse today? I'm a little bit passionate this morning for a 9.30 on a Thursday, it's a bit crazy. But does everyone get me? Is everyone understanding what I'm saying? I'm hoping I can see comments um, in my comment box this morning. I saw I saw Simone's good morning, Simone, and I saw Tina's comment this morning, and I did see that Simone shared too. Thank you for sharing, Simone. She's added a watch party. Thank you for doing that. And Gretchen shared as well. Thank you, Gretchen, morning. So I hope that that has made sense for you guys this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. It was another quick lesson today. Don't forget to go back and watch yesterday's to talk where we talked about part one. Thank you. Oh, Gretchen says I'm on fire. <laughs> Thanks, Gretchen. <laughs> I think we've got that little delay going on again with, um, with Facebook. So thank you guys. Thanks for the hearts and the thumbs up as well. I appreciate that. Yes. Thank you, Simone. Brilliant. Okay, so guys, don't forget to join me. Um, in fact, what I can possibly do now, I will put this in the um, comments above. Bridal business. Oh, this morning I can't spell business. Bridal business school dot com forward slash book more brides. Come and join me for masterclass. There's a link as well. Hi, Charmaine. Thank you so much for joining me. She says I'm on fire as well. All right, yeah, I'm really passionate about this, guys. I think we, I spoke to Gretchen. If anyone hasn't seen my um, my interview with Gretchen, Gretchen and I spoke the other day. It's up on my page, it's in the group, um, and it's in her group as well. But I was, I was saying to her, I think it's something that we kind of miss a lot of the times as hair and makeup artists. We, we kind of, we know that we have to do admin, but perhaps we don't know that we're not doing enough. And so hopefully my masterclass is gonna help kind of get you guys to think a little bit outside the box of going, huh, okay, so I have to put in a little bit of work now, but actually in the long run, this could actually turn more brides from being browsing brides to actually booking brides. And that's what my goal is, book more brides. All right, guys, that's it. Have a great rest of the week. Enjoy your weddings this weekend, and I shall be back live again next week. Um, please leave me your comments below. I'm really grateful for everyone who shares the broadcast out. Thank you for those of you that have continued to watch me on the replay, and I shall catch you again for more of this kind of stuff. I'm gonna talk more about booking brides, com conversion, okay? This, is, this month is all about conversion. We'll be talking more about that next week as well. Bye, everyone.